two slides. Um, we're going to look at the mammary gland. We're, gonna look at, we're going to look at the mammary gland under the microscope. It shouldn't take us very long because there's not a lot of detail to look at, but I think it is important to look at the cells, see how they're arranged, which actually is quite cool. See how they're arranged because breast cancer is so prevalent. And if we look at the cells in the mammary gland and the breast as a whole, we better understand what breast cancer means, what cells these tumours and cancers form from. All right. Now, the reason I've got two slides is because, well, really, we want to look at a lactating mammary gland. A mammary gland is producing milk. You'll see why. These are clearly from animals, not humans. Um, but we'll have a look at the lactating mammary gland first. Um, and then we'll compare afterwards. Now the, the mammary gland has multiple lobes. It is called a, or it's described as a compound tubular acinar gland. And it's an exocrine gland. What does that all mean? Compound means that it's um, it's got a, it's got ducts and it's got branching ducts. A tubular gland means it's got tubular bits, secretory bits, and acinar means that at the end of those tubes you've kind of got like a cul-de-sac, an acinus, which is also secretory. Exocrine means that it secretes onto an external surface. Uh, the, the the mammary gland is considered to be a modified sweat gland. Uh, okay. So this is, this is an active gland. This is a lactating gland, a, a secretory gland. And uh, this is what much of the mammary gland is normally made up of. Uh, we're looking at fat there. We're looking at adipose tissue, fat cells. So there's a little nucleus around the outside. There's a big space of nothingness because the fat has been removed. Um, so most of the breast normally is fat, but during pregnancy, we see all of this form. We see um, a lot of lovely glandular structure. Oh, look, and we're seeing some, some bigger tubes there. We're seeing a lot of supportive connective tissue, and we're seeing a lot of uh, smaller tubes. And we're seeing these organized into kind of little lobules, aren't we, right? Uh, interspersed with fat and connective tissue. Okay, let's um, let's jump in here. So that was my four times objective lens, which is 40 times magnification to my eyes because my eyepieces also magnify 10 times. Um, okay, so there's We can see we can see that that circle in the middle there. That's a section through a, a duct, a tube, and it's surrounded by connective tissue. Um, and you can see how that is different from this arrangement. So that is a is a major duct, whereas that is a secretory unit. And that compound tubular acinar gland thing I was talking about. So you've got you've got your duct, and it branches, branches, branches. So essentially, here we've got lots of very small uh, tubules and some acini, small ducts. These are secretory, and those secretions are going to pass out through the big duct. Can we have a look at the big duct first? Because um, these tend to look quite cool. There we go. So you can see the connective tissue around the outside, that, that pale pink. And then we can see lots of uh, darkly staining nuclei. So this looks like a tube lined by, well, not quite a single layer of cells, is it? There's two layers of cells there. And they're about as tall as they are wide, so they are cuboidal cells. Now those two cells are interesting. So the first layer of cells, so the layer of cells closest to the lumen is uh, the epithelium. Epithelium because this is an external, this is ducting onto an external surface. And then the second layer of cells, deep 
So that first layer of cells is a myoepithelium. These are epithelial cells that can contract. So this is a secretory structure that has ducts that can squeeze its secretions along. Um, and then that is surrounded by uh, connective tissue and reinforced it. This is my highest power. This is, uh, a, well, this is 400 times to my eyes. And we can see that there is some secretory material in the middle there. Um, but can you see how we've got essentially two layers of cells pretty much there? And uh, yeah, that's the arrangement. A layer of epithelial cells and a layer of uh, myoepithelial cells. And we will come back to the ducts. Okay, so that would be a lactiferous duct or a mammary duct or a mammillary duct. Um, and each lobule has a, you know, eventually it has a final lactiferous duct. Uh, one important idea is that all these lactiferous ducts open individually. So if, if the female human breast has 20 lobules, each lobule has a lactiferous duct. Each one of those lactiferous ducts opens at the nipple individually. There isn't, they don't all just converge onto a single bigger duct, which means that if any of these ducts get blocked by inflammation and infection, the other ducts can still secrete milk. Um, okay, so that's a lactiferous duct surrounded by dense connective tissue. If I slide upwards to this area, so this would be a secretory unit. So again, well, can you see how these cells look a little bit different? Can you see how the nuclei look different? These cells are a little bit chunkier. We've still got a cuboidal epithelium there. But you see how that, that looks, as in the cells lining the tube look a bit different here. So these, these are secretory epithelial cells. It's essentially the same tube, but these cells secrete milk. They make the proteins uh, and what have you of milk. And that's what you can see in the lumen there. You can see their secretory products. And again, um, this is a little bit more mixed up, but maybe you can make out how you've got one layer of cells uh, one layer of secretory cells closer to the lumen and then another layer of cells a little further out and again those are myoepithelial cells that can secrete, uh, that can squeeze um, and uh, push the secretions along the duct. And if we follow this around we can see look, that there's that dense connective tissue holding all this together and on that side look there's some fat in there as well because it's fat that determines the size of the the resting breast that is the non-lactating breast okay if we slide around what else can we see so these secretory units get called uh, alveoli or acini and i think we can see some some acini there we can also get a sense of the branching of the ducts with some of those shapes there. But remember, this is a lactating breast. This is an active breast producing milk. So as we slide around, we see, we see dense connective tissue. We see some fat, but we see a lot of glandular tissue. Um, there's a bit of a fold there. But OK, so that's the lactating breast. Now, these epithelial cells, so Where's our, there we go, there's our duct. So the epithelial cells of the duct have um, receptors for oestrogen. So they respond to oestrogen and they can branch and develop as a result. And uh, the secretory cells, um, they have receptors for uh, prolactin and progesterone and oestrogen. And during pregnancy, those hormones drive this development of this glandular tissue. All right, so we're seeing Lots of glandular tissue, a little bit of fat. Let me go to the lowest power. Look, all right, so we're seeing lots of glandular tissue, some fat, some connective tissue, but we're seeing lots and lots, lots and lots of glandular tissue. And look, there's some more ducts over there. Um, this is your lactating breast, right? Got it? Okay, this is the resting breast. This is the, the, the breast most of the time, not producing milk. Compare or contrast. Um, 
same magnification. Well, there's a duct. Those are some blood vessels, maybe. There's a duct. There's some poorly staining connected tissue. There's a duct. There are some other ducty bits around. There's a duct, right? Wildly different. Um, so most of the time, the mammary gland is a rudimentary, rudimentary collection of ducts. And that, all that glandular tissue that you saw, that has been driven by those hormones during pregnancy to develop those glandular lobules, to prepare, to secrete milk after birth to support the newborn. Most of the time, we just see some ducts. So let's jump down to look a little bit more closely and see what we see. So we'll be looking at a lactiferous duct again here. So again, we're looking at the, the, upper, the, uh, the connective tissue hasn't stained very well on this section. And we can see little blood vessels. We can see quite a bit of connective tissue, more blood vessels. And um, there will be fat in here, some fat. But again, the fat, well, these are cells that don't have fat in them anymore because of the way that <laughs> that is like a a white cat in a snowstorm, right? But those are fat cells um, because the fat has been removed during processing to prepare the slide and fat cells have got a small nucleus around the outside and most of the cell is fat. Can you, you can just about make that out, right? I can just about make that out with my eyes. So the normal breast is mostly fat with some connective tissue. Fat determines the size, connective tissue determines the shape. Um, there are some blood vessels in there, but in terms of mammary gland tissue, we have ducts, and this is really important. So again, what we're seeing in the ducts is the same sort of layout. Um, we're seeing, um, so we've got that, that layer of cuboidal epithelial cells against the lumen, then we have some more cells behind those, and those are the myoepithelial cells. And the reason this is so important is, of course, because of breast cancer. Um, in breast cancer, so in benign tumours, yes, the connective tissue can form masses within the breast, but in terms of breast cancer, what we think of as breast cancer, it's these cells. It's the cells of the ducts, it's the epithelial cells that become cancerous. And that's why this is a carcinoma. That's why these are adenocarcinomas, because that word describes a cancer that can spread around the body that's formed from the epithelial cells of a gland. I mean, these, these cells will respond to estrogen with the menstrual cycle, they respond to hormones during pregnancy, but um, like epithelial cells elsewhere in the body, they are good at dividing and replacing themselves. Um, you may have heard of DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. I mean, if we're looking at this section here, ductal carcinoma, it's, it's a cancer from a duct a carcinoma from epithelial cells of a duct of a gland. In situ means it's, it's, it's still where it started, it hasn't moved away yet. So that's a common term. 80% um, of um, breast cancers are um, adenocarcinomas. Um, these cells, like I say, these, cells, these epithelial cells have receptors for oestrogen. 50 to 85% of breast cancers, those cells in those cancers have receptors for oestrogen. You might have heard of the BRCA genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. The BRCA genes encode for tumour suppressor proteins that help limit the chance of a tumour forming, of a cancer forming. So somebody with an error Somebody with um, the wrong sequence for the BRCA genes uh, are likely to produce um, tumor suppressor proteins that aren't the right shape, so they can't work properly, which then increases their chances of developing an adenocarcinoma from these cells during their lifetime. That's what all that means, right? So in the resting breast, in the breast throughout most of the lifetime, these are the cells of the gland. We have these 
these ducts, these small ducts lined by these epithelial cells scattered through the breast, ready to respond to hormones, to form a functioning mammary gland that produces milk. But most of the time, this glandular tissue is just sat here um, embedded in dense connective tissue um, and fat. And that is the histology of the breast. Um, it's a pretty simple but very interesting gland. And I quite like that, quite like that cuboidal epithelial cell arrangement. It's, um, yeah. It's pretty neat. Anyway, okay, there we go. So that's the histology of the breast. Now you've looked at it under the microscope. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about all the cells involved in breast cancer and what the different types of breast cancer are. Mostly, 80% of them come from uh, the epithelial cells lining these ducts. All right, I've got 142 exam papers to mark. I'll see you next week.